Starship The new SpaceX rocket will be a real revolution in the space industry. It will reduce the cost of transporting cargo and people into space, enable Earth-to-Earth -Earth passenger spaceflight, put humans on the moon, and also it will be used to transport the first crewed mission to Mars. We've all seen what Starship looks like. It's a gigantic 50 meters cylinder shaped steel construction. But what's inside this massive rocket? About this and much more in today's video. Let's start with how exactly a Starship is constructed. The Starship system is made of two parts. The Starship spacecraft is stocked on a rocket booster called Super Heavy. The whole rocket is made of stainless steel. By choosing stainless steel for the production of the Starship, the entire production process of the rocket can be faster and much cheaper than with other materials. For comparison, the cost of a kilogram of carbon fiber with a material originally planned for the production of the Starship is around $200, whereas a kilogram of stainless steel only costs $3. Additionally, stainless steel has a high melting point. It can get up to and even beyond 815 degrees Celsius, which is of course a great advantage when talking about rockets. As a curiosity, I can say that these rings, which you see on Starship photos, are due to this standard maximum roll height of commercial steel, which is 1.8 meter. The next time you see a picture of Starship, just think about that each of these rings is 1.8 meter apart, which is the average height of a man. This might tell us something about how huge Starship is. The Starship spacecraft itself is 50 meters high, but the whole rocket system is 120 meters high. In addition, the Starship is 9 meters in diameter, which makes it even more massive. Let's take a look at what exactly is inside this giant construction. Basically, the Starship can be divided into two main parts. In the lower part, there are fuel tanks and engines, and on the top, there is a payload section. Starting at the bottom part of the rocket, there are six Raptor engines. These methane oxygen propellant Raptor engines will be the main propulsion system of the Starship. More precisely, the rocket will use three sea-level optimized Raptor engines and three vacuum optimized Raptor engines. The sea-level engines are identical to the engines on the Super Heavy booster. Transport use in space is expected to use a vacuum optimized Raptor engine variant to optimize the efficiency of the engine's thrust to approximately 3.7 km per second. Above these engines, there are propellant tanks, or more precisely liquid oxygen tank and liquid methane tank. The two giant propellant tanks are separated by a common dome, and together these tanks are meant to contain 1,200 tons of fuel. The fuel mixture which was chosen to power the rocket is also an interesting thing. Liquid oxygen and liquid methane is not a very common rocket fuel in the space industry, but SpaceX chose this option for several good reasons. First of all, this fuel mixture burns cleanly and thanks to this, the Starship can be fast prepared for its next use. The second big advantage of this fuel is its weight. It has a lower density than other rocket fuels and therefore it is also lighter. The third thing is that by using the mix of liquid oxygen and liquid methane, Starship will be able to transport people to Mars and back. Until now, space technology has allowed us to transport humans to Mars, but the problem has been getting them back on Earth. To solve this problem, SpaceX engineers plan to use a chemistry trick called the Sabatier process. The Sabatier process uses a nickel catalyst to synthesize methane from atmospheric carbon dioxide and hydrogen, which can be extruded from local Martian water ice. Having liquid methane and liquid oxygen leads to the possibility of producing rocket fuel. Thanks to this, the first colonizers will be able to return from Mars to Earth with a refueled Starship. Now let's move to the payload section, which is, I think, the most interesting part of the whole rocket. Starship can carry up to 100 people and is meant to hold a payload of up to 150 metric tons. This is really a huge amount of space to use. Let's just compare it with the Starlink missions example. Falcon 9, which is currently launching the Starlink satellites into orbit, is able to carry up to 60 satellites, whereas the Starship will be able to transport as many as 400 Starlink satellites. It makes a significant difference, especially when we consider the fact that the cost per launch for Falcon 9 is around $50 million, while the Starship is only $2 million. 
However, as we know, Starship will not only be used for cargo transportation. In the future, the Starship will also be used for things like launching astronauts to the International Space Station, crewed moon missions, or even transporting people to Mars. Of course, it is possible to design the space of the payload bay depending on the purpose of the mission. At this point, we don't know exactly how the payload bay space will be designed for. For example, future crewed missions to Mars. But there were several concepts. We don't have that much time to cover all these concepts of the Starship interior. But let's take a look at what all the designs have in common. For such big projects as the Mars mission, you need to provide the crew with adequate living conditions, especially considering the fact that the mission will last about 7 months and up to 100 people will travel abroad spacecraft. Each astronaut will have his own special sleeping cabin, which will resemble the ones we know from Japanese capsule hotels. These sleeping cabins may not be too big, but remember that the cabins will only be used during sleep. Most of the time, the crew will spend in other rooms such as the passenger area. A space flight, as long as this one to Mars, will also require the crew members to change their daily routine. For example, due to exposure to zero gravity conditions for long periods of time, Astronauts may experience problems with their bones, muscles, and cardiovascular system. In order to prevent these problems, astronauts will have to exercise regularly, and therefore a special room and machines for this purpose must be included in the interior design of the Starship. The zero-gravity conditions also require the interior design to include a special toilet, similar to the one present at the International Space Station. Inside the Starship, there will also be a special kitchen space, of course. The food served on the board Starship will be quite different from this typical dinner on the Earth. Meals will consist of thermostabilized food, like cans of tuna, that have been heat processed to destroy deteriorous microorganisms and enzymes. Another room that, of course, will have to be on the Starship board is a hold space, with all cargo that will be needed during the mission indirectly to Mars, such as Mars rover vehicles. As I mentioned, SpaceX has not yet presented the official design of the interior of the payload section. So we do not know exactly how these rooms will be arranged. It is also possible that SpaceX will add some additional rooms. On the internet, we can find concepts such as this space concert hall or this viewing gallery with this large window. As you can see, the design of Starship rocket looks really impressive. If you are interested in more content related to Starship, I invite you to watch my previous video in which I answer the questions, why Starship is a real revolution in space exploration.